What is going on, my fellow fat kids? Today, we're back with episode two of Play in Series Team Comparison. This episode will be the Florida Panthers versus the New York Islanders. We will be going a little more in depth than on the Hurricanes Rangers episode because I got bullied by Carolina fans because they lost and they told me to. I will quickly explain how this series works and will then explain the advanced stats we'll be looking at and what they mean. But first off, the rules. We will be dissecting each team position by position and comparing which team is superior in each one. We will determine who has the better left wing, right wing, center, etc. One point will be awarded for each position, making a total of six points. If we have a tie in the end, the tiebreaker will be who I personally think will win the series. Now, onto the advanced stats. We will of course be looking at goals and assists like normal, but today we will be factoring in Corsi and Fenwick. Corsi is for shots, blocks, and misses all added together. Corsi against is all of that, but against your team. We will specifically be looking at Corsi percentage, which is Corsi for compared to Corsi against. A Corsi over 50 signifies that when you're on the ice, your team controls the puck more than the other team, and below 50 means the opposite. Fenwick is much of the same, it just doesn't take block shots into account. Only shots on goal and shots that got through but missed the net. Well, without further ado, let's get the video started with left wingers. Taking a look at the two teams' left wings, it seems like we're starting off with a very hard matchup. You have the star power over in Florida with Huberdeau, and then the three-line punch in New York with uh, Lee, Beauvillier, and Broussard. Past Huberdeau, Florida doesn't have all too much, so the surface level numbers seem to be rather even. So if we move over to the advanced stats, we see that Florida has the slight edge in that department. Based almost solely on that, I will be giving round one to Florida. I'm sorry, Islanders fans. This round was very, very close. Moving on to centers, I'm hoping that my decision will be a little easier this time. This matchup is somewhat similar to the first one, where Florida has one big star, and New York makes up for it with depth. Something that stands out right away is Pajos, Lowe, Corsi, and Fenwick. This is because he played in Ottawa for most of the season, and Ottawa doesn't control the puck as much as other teams. It's still a bad number to have, but not as bad as it looks on paper. I personally think that Barkov and Howla are about equal to Barzal and Nelson, so we will be looking at each team's bottom two centers, so it becomes Pajot and Sezikis versus Walmark and Achari. And in that matchup, I will be taking the Islanders duo, based almost entirely on Pajot. Um, in his small seven-game stint with the team, he was far from spectacular, but everyone needs some adjustment time, and I'm banking on him returning to his glory days with Ottawa. The point for centers will be going to the Islanders. So far, this match has been much closer than the other two that I've done so far, which uh, you should go check out, by the way. But anyways, moving on to the final offensive position, right wingers. I think that we found our first rather easy call here. Florida pretty much has three 20 goal scorers, whereas New York doesn't even have one. I know that New York's right wingers are more playmakers, but still, they are outclassed in almost every way by the Florida wingers. Even if we take a look at their Corsi and Fenwick, Florida has three players with their advanced stats both over 50, which is a great sign. And outside of Eberle, New York's advanced stats aren't looking too great. So round three will go to the Panthers. Moving on to the defensive side of things, the Panthers lead 2-1. For defense, we'll be using the controversial plus-minus stat. It's not good in a vacuum, but when compared to the team's goal differential and other teammates, it can be a useful stat to look at. Looking at left defense, I was a little surprised at the lackluster advanced stats on the Islanders' decor, as I thought that they were a very solid team defensively. None of their defenders having a Corsi or Fenwick over 50 would have been an issue for me had Florida done any better in that department, but they haven't. So, that's a wash. Moving on to plus minus. All six defenders are hovering right around their respective team's goal differential, so again, that's a wash for me. Finally, looking at points, Yondel is the clear standout player, but New York has the depth. It's another very close round for me, but I'm going to be giving the point to Florida due to Yondel's offensive capabilities. The score is now 3-1 for Florida. Let's see if Florida can secure the win with right D, or if the Islanders can keep a fighting chance. As much as I want to try and make this an interesting video and keep the points relatively even, there's just no way that I could possibly argue for the Islanders in this round. Pulak is good, but Ekblad is better. In points, plus minus, and even the advanced stats. And Florida also takes the defensive depth with Strauman and Wegar, who are both better than Boychuk and Mayfield. Florida gets this point, and they secure the win, making it 4-1.
So Florida has secured the victory, but let's see if the Islanders can at least keep it close by taking the goalie round. I will quickly explain the advanced goalie stats that I'll be looking at for this comparison. First off is quality start percentage. The quality start is a game where the goalie has a save percentage over the league average, and quality start percentage looks at how often a goalie has a quality start. Next is goal saved above average. This one is a much more complicated statistic as it takes a lot of things into account, but in a nutshell, it's when put in the same scenario, when faced with the same number and quality of shots, how many more or less goals this goalie will allow than the average goalie. If we had had this debate last season, or any of the last five seasons before that, Bobrovsky would have taken the win over Varlamov and Grice for Florida, but this year he shit the pet in every sense of the phrase. I know it's only one year into the deal, but if he keeps up this play, this contract could quickly turn into one of the worst free agent signings of all time. But from the little action we've seen him in, um, Dreiger has been very good, and if Bob lets Florida down in Game 1, I'd think about giving him the nod in Game 2. The Islanders goalies are both very similar to each other. They're good, but they're probably missing Leonard from last season. Dreiger has played better than both the New York goalies, and well, almost all goalies in the league for that matter, but he hasn't seen enough ice to be able to carry Bobrovsky to a win in this category. Point Islanders. So that's the end of team comparison, and I have Florida winning 4-2. But now for the more important question, who do I have winning the play-in round? Contrary to what I've shown here, I'm going to be taking the Islanders to win. There's one crucial thing that this comparison doesn't take into account, and that's coaching. Barry Trotz is, for my money, the best coach in the league right now. He takes this what is, in my opinion, a non-playoff roster on paper, and turns them into a deadly force that nobody should want to play in the playoffs. Also, this Florida squad has very little experience in the playoffs, which is a big issue. With how the Islanders did last year in the first round, I can't see them losing to Florida with their on-paper rosters being so close to each other. That's all from me. Please don't get upset at me if I had your team losing. Somebody has to lose each series. Well, be sure to work out, eat healthy. <laughs> you know I'm just kidding. See you in the next one.